Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. <laughs> and I'm just looking at these conference standings. Look at Oklahoma. They are 99 everything. I mean, the, this is definitely going to go through Oklahoma. The Oklahoma division is going to go through them. But look at that. They're 97 to 14. They've outscored opponents so far this year. Look at Murray, seven touchdowns. One interception, and I mean, they are just straight destroying whoever they play. They played FCS in Tulsa, so they haven't played anybody too tough. But still, to score 97 points, only give up 14, that is great. But look at us. We're right behind them, 93 and 31. And look at Kansas. Kansas is 91 and 62. They played a couple of, uh, I mean, eh. Memphis is 0-3. Louisiana Tech is 1-1. I mean, they're okay teams. Uh, they definitely have a tough schedule to end the year. Kansas State's undefeated as well. Looks like they've had some closer games, low-scoring games. Oklahoma State, 3-0, though. They're a team to watch out for. They've went to overtime twice already. And, I mean, they've had some high-scoring games. I mean, look at that offense. Looking at the other side of the division, Houston's 2-0. No surprise that they're doing well because I knew they would do well. They did play FCS in Hawaii, so no surprise there. Texas is actually 2-1, and, and they lost to Notre Dame to open up the season. But Notre Dame is a tough opponent. So, I mean, they have one loss, but it's definitely valid because they're playing a good team. Uh, Texas Tech's 2-1. TCU's 1-1, one one, Iowa State, and then Baylor's 0-2. Oh so uh, maybe some teams to watch out for. Texas Tech, they did lose the UTEP. I'm surprised they lost the UTEP. That may be alarming for them. But, I mean, Houston's definitely going to be uh, one of the top teams in this division going forward. They didn't do too well in the American Athletic Conference when we were there. Uh, I mean, they finished second in their division, but in our division, but, I mean, I was expecting a little bit more, but I expect them to do pretty well with that air raid system that they have. So, if we're looking at the Heisman watch here, uh, Alex Brown, remember, he should have been on the Heisman watch last year. But look at this. After that game last last week, 26 carries, 175 yards, three touchdowns, and three touchdowns for 17 yards, he actually goes down. He goes down. He's actually above Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts goes up two touchdowns, 95 yards on the ground. And Sam Darnold, who won it last year, 254 yards, four touchdowns. So, I mean, <laughs> they might be kind of disrespecting our guys, but let's just look at where we ranked in this uh, in this early part of the season. So, I think it's because Cindelar's up there. I think it's because they played all three weeks so far. We only had two games. Uh, rushing attack, Alex Brown's 30 in the nation, just about 246 yards on the ground. And that's only through two games. So, I mean, he's doing pretty well. Receiving leaders, we don't even have any receiving leaders at this time. Jamel Cooley's probably the closest, but I don't think he qualifies. He must not. Tackle leaders, Vince Cohen is up there. You know he's always going to be at the top uh, just because I'm the one that's using him most of the time. But look at Hunter Greggs. He stays on this pace, man. He might lead the nation in sacks when it's all said and done because he's got three sacks through two games games and he's only a freshman so it's it's pretty cool to see him in the in the interception category Vince Cohen has two I know uh everybody else on our team pretty much has one up to this point in our secondary so uh remember we had the three interception game last week so this week we're going up against Texas let's look to see how our ratings match up so we're all C's they're A plus everything pretty much they have 30, the 39 in the nation in points per game. Uh, looks like they have a pretty good balance of pass and run, the 37 and 39 respectively. And then their defense, it looks like they have a decent run defense, number 42 in the nation. But look at us. We're number one in the nation in rush defense. Remember last year we were giving up back-to-back-to-back 200-yard games? Look at the turnaround that this D-line did for us. We are now number one in rush defense. So... Let's hop into this game. It looks like they force a lot of turnovers, so we might have to be careful because they forced five turnovers in three games. So let's just get into it. Let's go. This is definitely going to be a tough matchup. And one thing I noticed about this game with the slider adjustments is that it takes about a week to kick in for some reason. If you change the sliders, you won't see a difference that next game, but you'll see it the following game. So maybe the sliders will kick in a little bit during this matchup going up against a freaking A plus in every category, Texas. And we're gonna have our work cut out for us. So early on in this game, trying to get the passing game involved, but here we are taking a sack. And this is what I was talking about. We we put our uh, blocking down to about zero. So you can definitely tell there's a difference. So on a third and 16, luckily, 
a bad throw on that one ends up being a catch for Ben Miller on the outside so facing a third and four Alex Brown gets straight up destroyed in that hole and gets flipped over stopped before the first down so we do have to settle for a first down on the first drive so here is Shane Bouchel leading this Texas offense out onto the field and here he is finding little Jordan Humphrey what a name that is and on a first and 10 trying to run the ball and getting eight yards is Kyle Porter and running the ball is a part of their game and on another first down, Kyle Porter getting a 14-yard gain on that one. So facing a first and 10 now inside the 30-yard line. Johnson this time subs in for Kyle Porter, and Kirk Johnson breaks the tackle, gets the 24-yard touchdown run, and Texas goes up at home 7-3 to start this game. And we have a running game of our own, giving the ball to Alex Brown here. So facing a first and 10. Finding Alex Brown open down the seam, down the sideline, and he's going to juke his way inside the 25-yard line. Nice throw that time, avoiding the hit that time by Cohen. And once again, another nice throw out of the stretched arm of the defender. Kevin Oliver comes up with it. So now facing a third and goal a couple of plays later, Ashton Cohen's going to roll out, but the ends are too fast, and he pushes Cohen out of the bounds, and that's going to be another field goal for this Marquette offense. So now back out on offense, Shane Bouchel attempting a screen play, but this Marquette defense showing some heart here versus we're pretty much an underdog in this game. So here is Shane Bouchel on a third and seven, rolling out, finding the open hole. So facing another third down later in this drive, this time a cover zero, trying to get some pressure on him, but he finds Humphrey once again across the middle. And now they're in our own territory. So facing another third down this drive, this time Duvernay is going to get open, and that one's going to be a touchdown. I either had to go with the other seam guy or him, but luckily, not luckily on our part, but Shane Bouchel finds the open man. So now facing the next drive, Ben Miller runs a great route that time, but Ashton Cohen slightly overthrows him instead of leading him to the right a little bit. In Texas, the defenders take over with that nice interception there. So Shane Bouchel takes back over an offense, but look at him running through two defenders, getting inside the 20 yard line. So facing another third down, he's been the third down killer for us in this game. And there he is, he almost breaks his way into the first down marker. So now facing a fourth and inches, Lewis Parker Bruh. with a tackle, but he straight up whiffs on that one. Kirk Johnson gets in for his second touchdown of this early part of this game. But look at Lewis Parker. He straight Bruh. up runs right past him. I don't know what Lewis Parker was doing on that one. And here we are, man. We're down by two scores. And if you paid attention to that last play, Jamel Cooley was wide open, but they sent a cover zero, and Ashton Cohen gets hit. So now facing a third and seven, getting it to Cooley one more time, putting on a nice move that time, and getting towards the 40-yard line. So facing a third and four later on this drive, two minutes left in this half, and Ashton Cohen's going to not find anybody and throw this one away. So now facing a fourth and four, trying to convert here. We got to go for it. It's in four-down territory and we get it with Eddie McCray with that 99 catching. I trusted him most on that route than any other player probably on our team ever since we found out that he's got such high catching. So now on a second and 13, rolling out to the left, and look at this. Roach comes up with the interception. Ashton Cohen gets hit on the throw, but look at this. It hits a couple of knees, and then he scoops it Bruh. off the ground. That is just an insane interception, and Texas takes over, and we were trying to get some points on the board before half, but now Shane Bouchel takes back over. Look at this. He almost fall, falls through that tackle and breaks that one for a touchdown, but luckily he falls down. But here is Shane Bouchel. Texas is doing anything they want on offense, anything they want on defense. I mean, they are just dominating us in every facet of the game. So here's Shane Bouchel once again rolling out to the left. And that time, whoo, Vince Cohen gets blown up by the block on the receiver that time. So now 30 seconds left in this game. 
third and five we at least get them stopped there before the goal line and they settle for the field goal before half so it is 24 to 6 and texas starts out the second half with the ball and we haven't been able to do anything on defense but this time Hunter Greggs leads a gang tackle on that one, stopping him on a second down. So facing a third and seven, Shane Bouchelle throwing a Duvernay once Bruh. again. And, uh, I mean, the game did not allow me to use or catch that one. And they get the first down. But on a couple of plays later, facing a third and inches, I thought they were going to run the ball. And instead, they go deep to Hemphill Map. And man, this is turning into an ugly game here. And I mean, just ugly. And injury update. Remember that interception that Ashton Cohen threw earlier with the tipped pass off the knees? He actually gets hurt and he's out three weeks. So that sucks for this offense that was looking to at least just show something so joshua rich comes in in the third quarter and takes two sacks so now this game turns ugly because our backup quarterback cannot get it done on his first two plays there so on a third and 28 just attempting to throw to jamel cooley and this one's going to be picked off so the third turnover in this game third interception by this Texas defense and they are just rolling at this point 31 to 6 three minutes left in the third quarter and look at Shane Bouchelle avoiding a sack on that one avoiding Cohen coming up with the tackle and he just gets first downs he's just doing it all I, I throw on spies on him nothing is working and here they are another third and goal Everybody's covered that time, but we send a blitz. But look at this. Shane Bouchelle gets through the blitz. All my blitzers are picked up, and they get into the end zone for the touchdown. So it's 38-6 to in this game, and Joshua Rich showing one more time that, man, I think this moment might be too big for him. But, I mean, he didn't have any preparation coming into this week, so this is pretty much a surprise for him. But, He's got to show some fight, so I'm looking to just get on the board here. And Alex Brown, you haven't seen his name much in this game, but here he is getting two straight carries. you got to feed the guy that gets you to these points, and we've kind of got away from it because we've had this large deficit to come back from. But on a third and 12, Joshua Rich rolling out. He doesn't have the speed that Ashton Cohen has. But he gets out of bounds on that one. So facing a fourth and seven, dropping back in an inaccurate throw forces the diving catch that's dropped on that one. And if that was maybe on target, that probably could have been a first down. But Joshua Rich showing some inaccuracy in this game. And, man, I mean, this is just a straight beat down. So six minutes left in this fourth quarter. Here is Porter once again getting the handoff for the four-yard gain. So Shane Bouchelle, a couple of plays later, getting it to Hemphill Map, and he gets up inside the 15-yard line. Poor tackling this time by the Marquette defense. So now facing a first and 10, Porter is going to give. Oh, my oh goodness. My He's going to give. Uh... Jetter the stiff arm on that one and he gets in for the touchdown look at that mean stiff arm and that is just basically a definer of this game I mean just everywhere just getting smacked in the mouth here's Joshua Rich I mean trying to get something going he gets it out to Jamel Cooley for the 15 yard gain on that pass so now four minutes left in this fourth quarter second and seven rolling out to the right nobody to throw it to but he finds Alex Brown on this one getting the first down and I mean we just got to get on the board I mean this is just horrible we cannot go out not scoring any points so here is Marquette in this offense finding Ben Miller for the 20 yard reception so facing a second and six inside the 15 yard line Alex Brown finally gets his touchdown in this game and I mean it's far too late but we're just trying to get something going so attempting a two-point conversion try and we're stuffed so now Texas takes over two minutes left in this game at about the eight yard line and this is just what is going on I mean Kyle Porter doing what he wants when he wants him and the combination of Shane Bouchelle 
I mean, it's just unstoppable for this Marquette defense, and that's going to be it. Texas, I mean, they just straight destroy us, and maybe we're not ready for these big teams yet. Maybe we need to do a little bit more recruiting, get a little bit better at each position, but we definitely needed this. It's a good wake-up call for this Marquette team, this young Marquette team, because remember, we have a bunch of freshman starters, a bunch of transfer starters. They're just now... They started off the season pretty good, 2-0, but, I mean, now when we play a tough team, definitely showing some of their signs of youth. But, I mean, we every facet of the game, we just couldn't do anything. Defense, Cohen's out now for three weeks, so we definitely got some things to change up with this offense. So, hit subscribe, hit that like button. We got to bounce back next week, but we're going up against FAU. Lane Kiffin and FAU, so we're going to have another tough matchup, so let's... Let's just move forward, man. See how it goes. Let's go. Stay tuned.